some of local uh, vegetables and local meat, and that we try to infuse the the two, you know, two culture at the same time. Now we talked about this on the show before, right? We've got fresh. That's a nice pound and a half pound lobster, and a half, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, we've got a. This is a a, male, a, female. a female lobster, right? Because it's got soft over here. We want to make sure that they're lively and fresh and they're alert. No right. dead lobsters going in yep. there. Hard shell, right? All right, Steve, throw them in there. Let's see what we're all about. While he's cooking with. Hey everybody, welcome to tonight's episode of Cafe Con Gas. My name is Cassandra. I'm really excited to be here with you guys tonight. Um, I'm actually just checking out. Um, oh, here we are. I just had a little panic. I was like, where is my show? I know exactly what's going on in my show, but I didn't see it. Come on. So, hey guys, new look today. A little bit, I'm matching the background with a little bit of purple, wearing some bracelet that my TD made me that I really love um, and cherish. So, welcome to tonight's episode. Whew. Let me just take a little deep breath and ground. If you haven't watched Cafe Con Gas before, Cafe Con Gas is just a show on healing, arts, and diversity. I always talk about the same three topics. So, something that I do each show um, are emotional check ins, and right now, I'm feeling just a little bit nervous. I really don't know why. Um, I think it's because I've been watching too much YouTube over the weekend. Um, over the holiday break, I watched a ton of beauty tutorials online. This was inspired by the day after Christmas where my brother Tony at Major Mayhem X. You can follow him on Twitter. You can check out Ponyville Express to check out his videos. He's 11 years old and he does a lot of social media. He said to me, he says, he's like cats. He's like, YouTube, like if you just sit and like you talk, you gotta like teach people stuff. YouTube is about learning and connecting. And I looked at him and I'm like, I am getting schooled in social media by my brother Tony and I accept that. I am the kind of person who will accept that. I'm not an arrogant uh, prick. So <laughs> that's all I can say. I'm not, I'm not a um, so I took that advice and I thought that was really fantastic and I really like that. So that was Tony right there. Oops, we're gonna do a wrong. Let's do a little, there we go. We're gonna do a little picture in picture and just adjust these settings. Sometimes when you come into the studio, everything's a little bit different. I try to readjust the settings for the neighbor, um, but someone just complimented me. They're like, wow, you use multimedia. Yeah, it's hard to talk for a half hour, of course. Um, and it also keeps me fresh and consistent. Um, and bringing material to you guys. And I hope you enjoy it, because um, I'm enjoying this and we're going into your, this is my second year of doing Café con Gas. I can't believe that. All right, so what do I have on tonight's episode for you guys? Um, we're gonna play, um, as I mentioned, I'm doing a little plug. Um, be creative, I've always been really creative. Before I learned PowerPoint, I mean, before I learned Photoshop, I was using PowerPoint for pretty much everything. So in the same vein, I wanted to kind of create and like, um, work on, you know, have a little bit more control over the content so you guys can follow what I'm saying. So I started doing a little prep right here. Um, I don't like where that is. Okay, right here. Um, and this is Café Con Gas. So yeah, Café Con Gas Live brings healing arts and diversity to you guys from Cambridge Community Television. This is a community resources. Please check this out. January 15th, there's an open house. I just took a picture of it and I'll post it, but that's what's going on. Okay. Hi. All right. We're live from Cambridge, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, not Cambridge. You, you, I don't have a, a British accent, um, but I could be in, I could, whatever. I'm not going to go there. Anyways, it's live. All right. So this is what I want to start with. This really changed my life. Um, this was a really incredible moment. I had, um, before tonight's emotional check-in, I just wanted to play this video and then I'm going to do an emotional check-in after this video. So I'm going to introduce this video. This is a video from Super Soul Sunday. This is an interview um, that Oprah did with Brene Brown. Dr. Brene Brown is wonderful. She's a doctor, an academic who studies the most taboo topic in academia, which is emotions. People don't really talk about emotions. So I like Dr. Brene Brown. This is a really, really fantastic exercise on who deserves to hear your story. Um, and a story on shame. So I'm just gonna play this clip and without really uh, a lot of introduction, um, I'll just let it speak for itself. So um, enjoy Dr. Brene Brown. In her second book, The Gifts of Imperfection, Brene says, we need to look before we take the vulnerability leap and choose carefully who we open up to. 
So I love in Gifts of Imperfection where you say, we share a shame story with the wrong person. They can easily become one more piece of flying debris, so well said, in an already dangerous storm. We want solid connection in a situation like this, something akin to a sturdy tree firmly planted in the ground. We definitely want to avoid the following. The friend who hears the story and actually feels shame for you, she gasps and confirms how horrified you should be, then there's awkward silence. Oh, yeah. Then you have to make her feel better. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you ever had that happen? Oh, my goodness. Where you're like... Yeah, oh, so God. now you have to now put yeah. your shingle out for that person. Yeah, Yeah. now I'm still in shame and I'm one less friend down. I'm like, and you're gone. <laughs> the friend who responds with sympathy, I feel so sorry for you rather than empathy. I get it, I feel with you and I've been there. If you want to see a shame cyclone turn deadly, throw one of these at it. Oh, you poor thing. Yes. Or the incredibly passive aggressive southern version of sympathy. I love this. Bless your heart. Yes. That just make that gives me the shivers when you say that. That's yes. like, I'm fixing to tear you down and God is on my side. Yeah. It is the worst. We've all been there. The friend who needs you to be the pillar of worthiness and authenticity, she can't help because she's too disappointed in your imperfections because you've let her down. Yes. Painful. The friend who is so uncomfortable with vulnerability that she scolds, how did you let this happen? The friend who is all about making it better and out of her own discomfort refuses to acknowledge that you can actually be crazy and make terrible choices. You're exaggerating, the person says. It wasn't that bad. Right. Yes. And the friend who confuses connection with the opportunity to one-up you. Well, that's nothing. Listen to what happened to me. So when you open yourself up and you're vulnerable enough to share something that has shamed you, what are you really looking for? I'm looking for... I'm looking for the person who loves me, not despite my vulnerability and imperfection, but because of it. I'm looking for what I call my move the body friends. I'm looking for the folks who are gonna show up and wade through the deep with me. Uh -huh. and, and I think it's a myth that you should have more than one or two of those. You know, the TV commercials that show 15 of us laughing and doing that kind of stuff, uh-uh. Uh -uh. You got one person in your life who you can call and say, I just told a bold-faced lie to someone I care about and I have no way to get out of it and I'm in a shame yeah. storm of epic proportion. You have one person that look at you and say, all right, let's do this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm with you, I've done it, let's talk it through. You are so lucky. So I'm gonna just stop right there um, because obviously I can't, you know, this is a clip, this is a little preview clip and this is really incredible and I would encourage you guys to go watch this on your own. So Brene Brown is talking about shame. What is shame, guilt and shame? We're talking about internalized shame. Shame is something that's really common among survivors of sexual abuse and domestic violence. They have a lot of shame with their story. And as this interview continues, Oprah makes that connection. And she says, she's like, oh man, you know, she says in a very compassionate way, she's like, it's not, people will get help for the act or people will get help to move out of violence uh, or people will get help to, you know, be removed for their abuser. But what do they do from the shame with that? So Brene Brown talks about it's not like Sex in the City where the four of us are totally on the same level and we're really getting each other. This is just totally different. This is like having at least one person, like she says, who will move the body and who will get you out of your brain. And I think that's like the biggest problem. Um, and we're just going to go right into today's emotional check in to like talk about that. But those are one of the biggest problems that people have. They just don't move the body and then we're frozen by emotion. So today is a really great example of a, a really, really good girlfriend of mine. We can sit, we can go into our heads, but we met at the museum, we went out with each other and that felt really good. She helped me move the body. We were talking about relationships. We were talking about life circumstances, but she's like, all right, come on, let's get up and move. So I think that's what Brene Brown is talking about there. And I would really recommend Brene Brown for people who um, suffer from imperfection, which is like an act of violence against yourself. Um, and for people who are really looking for additional resources on emotional intelligence, she's really, really great. I think she's down to earth and she kind of wants to drop the a-hole bomb um, a lot, which I really like because she's honest, because when you're really dealing with visceral emotions, it's not like, you know, like she said, the person who just sit, it sits in silence and doesn't know what to do with you, and now you're like, oh my God, not, not only did I go through all these emotions to tell my story, but now I have to go and take care of you for to do that? Nuh-uh. Um, it's just really interesting. So I just wanted to show you guys that clip. That's something that's really been on my mind. 
Um, so today's clip going into how are you feeling today? Today I'm feeling good, but this week I was like a little bit of like disgusted, hysterical, surprised. All of the um, emoji cons of the face is like, ah! Um, I just had one of those like life circumstances and I'm gonna do like a little like switch of PvP. I have just one of those life circumstances where I would describe it as such. Um, with this particular person, it was just like something they did that was just, you know, it, it's, it, it was like, um, I'm not blaming, uh, but it was just one of those moments where you are like, I am a woman of logic. I totally understand my life. I'm healing, but I want to like break something right now. Be like, ah, F this. This makes no sense. Um, so I had a couple of those moments. Um, so in that regard, I'm feeling slightly mischievous after that. <laughs> less frustrated, um, less ecstatic. We're feeling like baseline happy. Um, the kind of happy where I feel alive and light, but um, you know, I'm a little bit cautious. Just make sure the after effects of this week are intact. So anyways, Café con Gas, Healing Arts and Diversity. My roommate before I left today asked me what I was going to talk about. Uh, I wanted to talk about a topic that actually for me encompasses all of them. And I also wanted to like just make this switch to always tell you what is really going on, what's the vocabulary, what is to heal, why am I doing this? Heal is a verb that's used with an object. It's to make healthy, whole, or sound, restore to health, free from ailment, to bring to an end or conclusion, to free from evil, cleanse, purify, heal the soul, to effect a cure of a wound, broken bone, to become whole or sound. And I finally um, made a correction for this. To feel whole or sound, to become whole or sound, mend, get well, followed, um, often followed up um, or over. Uh, that's, it shouldn't be one word. So that's what healing is. So that's what we do here on Cafe Con Gas. And that's what I really wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, so I've done a lot of healing this week, um, and in doing that healing, I wanted to actually um, bring you this really, really interesting topic. Okay, so here's tonight's episode, um, or tonight's not tonight. Tonight's episode is happening. I must be falling asleep if I don't, <laughs> whatever. Um, this is tonight's scoop. So as I had mentioned before, I've been watching some beauty tutorials. I brought some journals to like ring in the new year. And I have been going on this like exciting journey around um, Christmas time. I took a trip to New York City. I got together with one of my friends. Um, she had a really bad um, health crisis. Um, she is just about 30, but struggling with IBS. I mean, she's going through a lot of stuff. Um, and we went together and she was feeling really, really well. And so we went to the mall. Uh, we went to the mall across from where I was born in Queens. So we went to the Queens Bar Mall. Hey, what's up, Queens? New York City, hey. Um, so we went there. I got down with the New Yorkers. And we, she took me to Bare Minerals. And I was like, I was just not, I had gone through this period in cleansing where I was really, really sick. And then I removed like all chemicals from my life. I also had gone like vegetarian over the summer, recently ate chicken again because I needed to eat chicken. So I've just been going through this really interesting time in my life where I'm trying to reintroduce or commit to routines that make me feel good. So part of self-care included beautifying myself and moisturizing a little bit because I noticed I'm about to hit, um, I'm not saying this live, I don't tell you how old I am, um, but I want to hit a really big milestone um, in my life in regards to age and I was like I need to bump this up a little bit so I ended up getting bare minerals so in doing that I wanted to bring up two interesting resources um, I was really excited but the last year I was in the hospital in February I had a huge lung infection I was like extremely fatigued and then I just broke out in response to everything I would eat food I would break out in hives I would have allergy attacks I would just have neck spasms I was just like really not feeling well so I took out a lot of sulfates um, I switched to seventh generation um, products. I just like switched up my life a little bit because I just felt I was allergic to everything. When you're allergic to everything, you're just not in a good space. So in doing that, I wanted to bring up two really interesting resources. In the name of Healing Arts and Diversity, because I've watched some of these YouTube videos and these homegirls are artists. I mean, they take the brush and I see a different person. I like doing something natural, enhancing my features. I don't like misleading um, and like once a year, like going like all drag queened out, like I did a fairy for Halloween last year. But on an everyday tip, I wanted to show you guys some really interesting resource. So here it is, Environmental Working Group. All right, so the environment, what is the Environmental Working Group? The Environmental Working Group is this really, really great website <clears throat> and they create a skin database. You don't have to sign up to your, um, uh, you don't have to sign up, but you can get a mobile app and it's a database where you can go 
let's see. So I got a facial powder. So you can go to, they have sun, makeup, skincare, and nails, and you can see which um, the ratings, right? So if you do ratings, it's low hazard, moderate hazard, high hazard. And if you go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and do this right now. So Tarte. All right. Tarte is sold at Sephora. They claim to have Amazonian clay in it. I don't know how true this is. It's a finishing powder. So you're going to go here and it's like, oh, wow, Tarte finishing powder. Overall hazards really low. And then it goes towards all the ingredients. So again, I'm back to where I was with nutrition. It's really overwhelming. I didn't grow up reading labels. I just ate what I had to eat. I was ate what I was offered in front of me. So this is a totally different vibe. Um, but it goes like through this list, iron oxides, um, mica, and then what, what are the concerns? Organ system toxicity. So if I obviously see a product and there's toxicity against the reproductive system, I'm at the type of age where in the next year, um, I'm single, okay? Just like letting you know anybody out there, hit me up, hey, <laughs> what? I'm single, but I still have babies in my five-year plan. I really want to start a family. So in starting a family, like, I don't want, maybe if I was 50, I would go get some retinol under my eyes and I would take that risk. But being that I eventually want to have children, I'm not going to take that risk right now. So it's really great. It gives you a list and it also like kind of helps you to understand um, what is in some of your products. You can do a search here. Um, you can see, you can build your own report, you can sign up, you can donate. It's a really good working group and I would highly recommend it um, to those of you out there who are interested in um, beautifying yourself but you don't want to um, give yourself cancer. Um, there's enough things giving us cancer. Safecosmetics.org is also another interesting space. Um, it seems like they don't really have, correct me if I'm wrong, they may not have the video out there but I don't see where there's like a list that I can look at, but this is only really interesting. They asked Revlon, you know, take, tell L'Oreal to take this out, um, carcinogen out of condoms, just like other chemicals. So I'm going to go and I'm going to, I want to talk to you guys more because I'm so excited to be here, but I'm going to show you a group, um, that is featured on the environmental working site. Um, and they're called, um, they're uh, the story of stuff, and I'm gonna show you this. This is the story of cosmetics, and we're gonna close with this video in the name of Healing Arts and Diversity, because this is really, um, a, this is a really fantastic and an artistic way to um, create a, nar a narrative and share the story, and I hope you guys enjoy it. This is called The Story of Cosmetics from 2010. Enjoy. This is a story about a world obsessed with stuff. It's a story about a system in crisis. We're trashing the planet, we're trashing each other, and we're not even having fun. The good thing is that when we start to understand the system, we start to see lots of places to step in and turn these problems into solutions. Can I tell you, I love my Pantene Pro-V. Of the dozen or so personal care products that I use every day, it's the one I can't live without. It says it gives my dull hair the ultimate cool shine. How does it do that? I was wondering that while I was lathering it in my hair one day, so I read the ingredients right here. Sodium lauryl sulfate, tetrasodium EDTA, methyl isothiazolinone. What is this stuff? I took this list to some scientists who know how to read it. Turns out my Pantene contains a chemical linked to cancer and lots of other products in my bathroom from sunscreen to lipstick and even baby shampoo also contain chemicals linked to cancer or other problems like learning disabilities, asthma, and even damaged sperm. Like most parents, I try to keep my family safe, but now I find out my bathroom is a minefield of toxins? What are we supposed to do? To find out the answers, we have to go back to one of the key features of our materials economy. Toxics in, toxics out. If at the factory you pour toxic chemicals into a product, like baby shampoo, you're gonna wind up with toxic baby shampoo and toxics in workers, communities, and duh, babies. So let's take a closer look at this toxic outrage where it seeps into our lives every day, in the bathroom. The average woman in the U.S. uses about 12 personal care products daily. The average man, about six. Each product containing a dozen or more chemicals. 
Less than 20% of chemicals and cosmetics have been assessed for safety by the industry's safety panel. So we just don't know what they do to us when we use them. Would you fly in an airline that only inspects 20% of its planes? Of course, not all of these chemicals are dangerous, but we know that many are. Some are carcinogens. That means that they can cause cancer. Others are neurotoxins and reproductive toxins, proven to mess up brain development and reproduction in animals. Wait a minute, we're animals too. It's like a giant experiment. We're using all these mystery chemicals and just waiting to see what happens. One thing we do know is that they're getting inside us. I had my body's toxicity levels tested and I'm loaded with things like mercury, flame retardants, triclosan, and lead. We all are. Even babies are being born pre-polluted. Now I know we can't live in a lead-free world, but do we have to put lead in our lipstick? I don't know, maybe it's my fault. Maybe I just bought the wrong thing. At the store, the choices seem endless. I can get lipstick in 49 shades, or shampoo for hair that's too dry, oily, fine, limp, or frizzy. But what about the choices that really matter? Like the choice to buy products that are safe. It turns out the important decisions don't happen when I choose to take a product off the shelf. They happen when companies and governments decide what products should go on the shelves. So who are these companies? <laughs> this is Procter & Gamble. They're the ones offering me herbal essences, the number two shampoo in the country. It contains toxic petrochemicals made from oil. Since when is oil an herb? On cosmetics labels, words like herbal, natural, even organic have no legal definition. That means that anybody can put anything in a bottle and call it natural, and they do. I mean, can you imagine a top seller called Petro Essences? Gross. What's even nastier are hair relaxers marketed to five-year-olds and skin whitening creams. These are super toxic, both in their ingredients and in the message they send about what beauty is. Ooh, here's Estee Lauder offering me a chance to help find a cure for breast cancer. That's nice, but wait, they're also using chemicals linked to cancer. Don't you think the best way for Estee Lauder to fight cancer is to stop using those chemicals in the first place? So really, I get to choose between meaningless claims on a bottle. But these guys get the real choice about what goes into those bottles. And that happens back here, at the factories where they're formulated. Why do the makers of these products use all these toxics? Are they trying to poison us? No, they're just working from a 1950s mindset when people were totally swept up in better living through chemistry. In all that excitement, they forgot to worry about human health impacts. That was years ago, and they are still using these same old toxic chemicals. Today, big cosmetics companies say the doses of poison in their products are small enough to be harmless. Yeah, maybe if you use them once a year. I guess they never get out and see that their products are being used and combined with other products every day. A little toxic dose under your arms, a little more on your hair, on your lips. And workers in nail and hair salons get dosed all day long. So the industry is used to doing things this way, and they can, because even now that scientists have linked the chemicals they're using to all sorts of problems, there are no laws to get rid of them. You're thinking, really? Come on, nobody's making sure that the stuff we smear all over our bodies is safe? Nope. The F so I'm gonna just take a little bit of break for you guys, a little intermission, because this video is a little bit long, but um, so yeah, so basically just a little bit of time out, I brought this up because I got really excited and I said to myself, what can I do to kind of, you know, freshen things up because I'm not out in the sun and the winter's really hard because I don't have an office that gets a lot of sunlight or office desk that gets a lot of sunlight. So again, going back to what? It goes back to not all of the blame is on you, loop it back to shame, emotional check-in, it's not all our fault, but there's also support that has to be given behind the scenes um, for the people who are choosing to put the products out there. So. Um, there's about two and a half minutes left on this clip, so I'm going to keep playing it for you guys. FDA doesn't even assess the safety of personal care products or their ingredients. Since 1938, they've banned just eight out of over 12,000 ingredients used in cosmetics. They don't even require that all of the ingredients be listed on the label. Now this is an example where we can all agree a little more government action would be helpful. This lack of regulation leaves a huge hole that the cosmetics industry is all too happy to fill. They set up their own committee to self-police their products, and compliance with their recommendations is voluntary. 
So the cosmetics industry is making the rules and then deciding whether or not to follow them. So you see, it isn't our fault that these toxic products are in our bathrooms. It's a whole broken system that's ignoring the simple rule, toxics in, toxics out. But we're not helpless. There are resources online that we can use to protect ourselves by identifying the best possible choices in the store. But the real action is with people working to change the system. Because if we really want to solve this problem, we got to start here with these guys. Women, parents, workers, people all over the country are demanding that Congress pass a new law, giving FDA the power to make sure that our personal care products are safe. We need common sense laws based on the precautionary principle. That means that when you're dealing with hazardous chemicals, just err on the side of caution. Let's not debate how much lead should be allowed in lipstick. Just get the toxic chemicals out of our products. Smarter laws would force companies to get past that old 50s mindset and figure out how to get us all clean and shiny without toxic chemicals. Can they? Totally. So that was a little bit of the video and I'm just gonna, we have about a minute left in the episode. Um, and I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching. Um, but I thought that was really interesting and I just clipped it off because she gets into suggestions for legislation and this video is from 2010 so I don't wanna give you information that doesn't, um, that isn't applicable anymore. Um, but I can tell you story of cosmetics and also the safe cosmetics org that they um, linked up to um, doesn't really look like they have much updates um, since that time. So it's something that I wanna go back and research a little bit more. But I just thought it was so interesting because we're really in a time where toxins come from everywhere. You know, we, I just feel like I grew up in the 90s when Diet Coke was really fatty. Um, and I knew um, three of my friends from the suburbs in high school whose mothers came with breast cancer and were drinking um, about five cans of Coke a day, um, co Diet Coke a day. They were Diet Coke heads, not Coke heads, Diet Coke heads. So anyways, is there a correlation? The research is finally coming out there. We're not too far back from the 50s, but let's do better to take care of each other and also benefit the planet. We use less toxins and they're less in the